Good evening. Will members and our guests please take their seats? This meeting will now come to order. As all members have received a copy of the call of tonight's meeting, the reading of the call will be omitted. Will everyone please rise and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As all members have received a copy of the minutes of our May 8 meeting, the reading of those minutes will be omitted. I do have, so I do have, uh, I will note a change that was made in the minutes. There was a reference to Bob Tuthill making a motion uh, and Mr. Tuthill is in District 4. That correction has been made. Are there any other proposed changes to the draft minutes? Well, I, I don't know how many others heard, uh, but some of you may remember one of the uh, individuals who paid great attention to the details uh, of the minutes, making sure they were entirely accurate, was Bill Clark of District 4, and Bill passed away um, in the last month. So very sorry to hear that news. All right. Um, there being no further changes to the draft minutes, the minutes as amended stand adopted upon unanimous consent. Ed Dadakis of a District 1. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, members of the town meeting. Just want to remind you that Tuesday, July 4th is America's birthday. And uh, we are going to be holding a flag raising, a town hall at 9 a.m. that morning. If you have never gone to the flag raising on July 4th, I really urge you to come out and do it. It, it truly is a wonderful way to start America's birthday. B. Crumbine has put an enormous amount of work and energy into the program to talk about the history of Greenwich and how we were part of the past and also talking very much about the future with citizenship awards to students in the schools today. So I put a bunch of these brochures out on the back table there. I hope you'll remember to join us at 9 a.m. on July 4th in the front of Town Hall. Thank you. Thank you. John Eddy, Chair of our Appointments Committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening, uh, fellow members and guests. Um, the Appointments Committee is seeking to fill one and possibly two uh, positions or nominate seeking to nominate for two positions, one or two positions on the Labor Contracts Committee. Um, we will be looking to nominate one regular member and if necessary, an alternate member. Uh, those who are nominated will stand for appointment to the Labor Contracts Committee at the September RTM meeting. There is information in a candidate information form available online on the RTM website. Anybody who is interested, uh, you have until Friday, July 14th at 12 noon uh, to please send your uh, uh, form and uh, statement of interest uh, to me. My uh, email address is on the town website. Um, and that's it. So uh, we welcome anyone who is interested. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other preliminaries that I am forgetting? All right, I did notify our district and committee chairs that based upon the reports received, I would recommend the following organization of our call tonight. On the consent calendar, I will designate items one, two, and three in a moment. I will suggest that we suspend the rules to combine items four, five, and nine for voting purposes, which would leave to be considered separately items six, seven, eight, 10, 11, and 12. And I understand some of those you know, may not actually come before us or will be disposed. All right, so at this point, pursuant to our rules, I will designate the following three items on our consent calendar. If they remain on the consent calendar, we will hear no committee reports and have no discussion on them. Item number one was postponed from our April meeting. That is a resolution to appoint Scott Johnson as a member of the Parks and Recreation Committee with a term expiring March 31, 2020. 
Item two, also postponed from April, is a resolution to appoint Robert Siska to be a member of the Board of Ethics for a term expiring March 31, 2020. And item three is a resolution to accept a grant in the amount of $13,500 from the Asia Society for Confucius Classroom. And this is given to the Board of Education. All right, are there any objections to the designation of those three items for our consent calendar? Hearing none, will the district chairs please mark your voting cards? Consent calendar items one, two, and three, and proceed to pull your delegation. All right. Um, the consensus was to combine items four, five, and nine. That requires a motion to suspend the rules. Is there such a motion? It has been moved and seconded to suspend the rules to combine items four, five, and nine for voting purposes. Motion to suspend the rules is not debatable and it requires a two-thirds majority to pass. All those in favor of suspending the rules and combining items four, five, and nine for voting purposes, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That motion has carried. All right, we will uh, begin with item number four. Princess Erfe with that resolution. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening. Um, item number four res uh, reads as follows. Resolved, pursuant to State Public Act number 95-268, an act concerning neighborhood assistance. The programs and complete applications filed in the town clerk's office are hereby approved for the purpose of encouraging business cont contributions to nonprofit organizations and government agencies providing important services in Greenwich. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Will a member please move the adoption of the resolution? The resolution on item four has been moved and seconded. Uh, do we need a public hearing on this? We do? All right, I will open the public hearing. Discussion on item four? No? All right, um, we'll leave the public hearing open uh, since this is one of three combined items. Item five now comes before us. Wayne Fox, our town attorney. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm, Mr. Fox, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, <laughs> you can go have a seat. All right, uh, reports of the committees that considered item four. Alexis Volgaris, Chair of our Health and Human Services Committee. I think it's the heat. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, Princess Erfe, Director of Community Development, met with Health and Human Services last week to present this item. And before I give our committee report, um, the Health and Human Services Committee would like to take a moment to acknowledge the fine work that Princess has done working with our committee. As many of you know, she's leaving us soon. Um, the projects that she works on with us, such as the Neighborhood Assistance uh, Act and the Block Grant, are messy projects filled with what seems like an overwhelming amount of applications, reports, details, and regulations. And she makes it look easy and effortless. So on behalf of Health and Human Services, we wish you the best of luck in your next professional adventure. Thank you. Okay, with the report. So the Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act is an item that comes before the RTM each year. It's a program that provides tax credits for businesses that contribute to com community programs that have received both municipal and state approval. Municipalities interested in submitting programs for inclusion in the Neighborhood Assistance Act must hold public hearings and then the legislative body, that's us, of each municipality must vote to approve the programs. After the tax-exempt organization receives both municipal and state approval for its proposed programs, it is then up to that organization to secure funding from businesses, which ideally will receive a tax credit from the state. July 1 is the deadline for the town to submit all applications completed by the non nonprofit agencies to the State Department of Revenue Services. This year, four local nonprofit organizations have applied for tax credit consideration, and you can find all those details on page four um, in the Explanos packet. The YWCA for $100,000, Kids in Crisis for $150,000, YM for $150,000, and Child Guidance for $60,000 for a total of $460,000. 
It should be noted that for programs such as the YMCA, which is applying for a contribution towards energy efficient windows, companies contributing to an energy efficient initiative are eligible for a 100% uh, tax credit. Um, rate or a tax credit rate while those contributing to a non-energy efficient initiative are only eligible for uh, tax credits at 60 percent. The state does have a monetary cap on the Neighborhood Assistance Act though as of last week that cap amount was not known and given the current financial situation of the state it's unclear how much the state will be willing to write off in tax credits. Again it is up to the organization requesting the funding for the approved programs to solicit and secure those donations directly from businesses this program does not cost the town of Greenwich anything. Our vote was 9-0-0 with districts 1, 7, and 8 absent. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Warner, Chair of our Finance Committee. Good evening, fellow members. Based on the facts you just heard, the Finance Committee voted 11-0-0 uh, in favor of uh, this motion. Uh, we also... Uh, took the time uh, and voted unanim unanimously to offer our appreciation as well of Princess Urfi and the job she has done, her lucid explanation of fairly arcane and detailed procedures and regulations throughout the years has been most helpful to everyone. And by acclamation, we wanted to uh, affirm our appreciation for her fine work. Thank you very much. Discussion on item four. Item five now comes before us. Wayne Fox, our town attorney. Good evening. Item number five, resolved that the sum of $200,000 being the same as hereby appropriated to be added to account number A140-51400, professional and other special services dash attorneys. Thank you. Will the member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item five has been moved and seconded. Doug Wells, Chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee. Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Legislative and Rules Committee took up this item last Monday evening. Uh, Attorney Fox presented this item to us. Um, he um, explained the reason for the additional funds for his um, uh, department are uh, based on the fact that um, Eversource is again going before the Siting Council in an effort to um, uh, put in um, uh, power lines or power um, sources below the uh, ground depending on uh, which uh, plan gets approved or if it gets approved at all. He's going to need outside counsel to uh, fight the fight for uh, how that affects the town. And in addition, that's going to cost about 140000 He also says that because of um, several uh, long-term illnesses in his department, uh, some attorneys were not available to him and so they had to hire outside counsel at a cost of approximately $60,000. So that's the uh, two components of this uh, request. Our vote in favor of the resolution was 11-0 with District 1 absent. Thank you. Michael Warner with the report of our Finance Committee. Uh, based on what you just heard, I would just add one or two small items. Uh, the Finance Committee took this up Monday, last Monday night. Uh, this uh, contest with Eversource has uh, suffered some reversals where in the first instance we won the case for siting the power lines and then um, Eversource went back to the siting council and achieved a reversal and now um, we have to go back at this with a, with a new effort that wasn't anticipated. Further, um, within the organization, there's been some long-term absences that were, weren't anticipated. Uh, given those facts, uh, the Finance Committee voted um, in favor of this request, 11-1-0, and there was some concern about whether this might have been anticipated. But, but that aside, um, your Finance Committee uh, supports this overwhelmingly. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion on item five. All right, before I call for item nine, which is the third of the combined items, um, I do want to make note of um, something that happened at our May meeting. It was noted in the minutes. 
This was on a District 7 motion on the budget. Um, the vote announced uh, was 100 to 101. 100 for the matter, 101 against it, and six abstentions. And I then um, noted that the motion had failed. Later um, that week, we learned that um, there, there were stray marks on the voting, on one of the voting cards. And uh, it, was, it was not obvious to the clerks that uh, someone who was absent had a, a check mark in, next to their name. Um, we corrected that in the minutes on page uh, 21. And so the vote was 100 to 100. It, the, the motion still failed. Um, but I was just asked to speak to one of our districts about a card. We have the same problem. And I, so I have to ask our district chairs or whoever is responsible for tallying the vote in your district, the very first thing you should do is strike out those who are absent, a nice straight line that goes through the yes, no abstaining column so that we don't run into this problem. This is the responsibility of the chair of the district and we can't have any stray marks then appear in that line other than the name crossed out straight through the voting columns. Um, so it's, it's very important, you can see it can cause a significant uh, problem for us. So I ask that you pay close attention. This is the most important thing a district chair is responsible for, getting accurate vote tallies for the district. All right, um, item nine now comes before us. Joe Siciliano, Director of Parks and Recreation. Good um, evening, item nine, resolved that the town of Greenwich accept a gift of a new audio system from the Greenwich Athletic Association to be installed at the Dorothy Hamill Skating Rink located at 14 Sherman Avenue, Greenwich. The value of the new audio systems includes insulation and is $10,458. Thank you. Thank you. Will a member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item nine has been moved and seconded. Uh, may we have the reports? Uh, Andy Chapin, Chair of our Parks and Recreation Committee. And may I see the uh, the Chair, Secretary of District 7, please. Um, Joe Siciliano presented this to us. It's relatively straightforward. The old sound system is over 20 years old. Uh, this sound system would be available for the use of anyone who is using the skating facility. Uh, the Parks and Recs Committee voted 11-0-0, District 5 absent. All right, discussion on item nine. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards, combined items four, five, and nine, and proceed to poll your delegation. While we are voting, we will uh, continue with the remaining items on our agenda. All right, is there anyone here to present items six and seven? And I assume those are withdrawn. All right, I, you may be aware that uh, in consultation with the town attorney, the law department, gave us an opinion that those items were not in legal order, which is why they have not gone forward tonight. All right, the next item to come before us is item eight. Peter Tessie, our first selectman. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen of the RTM. Resolved that the RTM approves the renewal of the lease with the Greenwich Garden Education Center for a part of the building known as the New North Greenhouse, AKA Horticultural Building, in the west wing of the former mansion owned by the town and located within the Montgomery Pineum Park. The Thank same you, will, will a member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item eight has been moved and seconded. Doug Wells, chair of our legislative and rules committee. 
Uh, this item was uh, presented by Abby Wadler, Assistant Town Attorney, last Monday evening at our committee meeting. Um, she explained that the town has had a lease with the Garden Education Center since 1957. Uh, the GEC exercised a renewal option um, in the current lease extending the term from October 1 to September 30, 2017, so that will be expiring in the fall. Um, the current lease does not per, uh, permit subletting, but the GEC desires the right to sublet uh, in order to um, uh, utilize some unused space on the second floor and provide that to the Greenwich uh, Tree Conservancy. Uh, because of this change, this new lease is being proposed for a 10-year term from October 1, 2017 through September 30, 2027 with a 10-year uh, renewal term. Um, the lease presented for approval is slightly uh, less different, uh, is slightly different from the current lease in that it uh, contains paragraph uh, 10 authorizing the subletting that I just uh, discussed and uh, the insurance provisions meet our current town standard. Uh, this proposed lease was prepared by making a digital copy of the current lease and updating uh, relevant provisions. Um, that um, method of updating the lease resulted in several um, typographical errors and mistakes in the lease which uh, were so extensive that we decided rather than having me change them up here uh, in excruciating detail and take too long, we asked the uh, uh, town attorney's office to um, revise the lease, send out a red line copy so you could all see that. And I believe that was circulated to all the uh, committee members and then on to the district. So you'll see where the changes have been made. I won't go into them now. Um, we then, um, uh, took up a motion uh, to delete paragraph 2B, which is the 10-year renewal provision. Uh, the vote in favor of this was um, 10 in favor, one opposed, with District 5 voting no, and District 1 was absent. Uh, we had a, a, another motion to amend uh, paragraph 10 uh, concerning uh, the uh, sublease uh, provision and, and to whom it could be um, sublet to. But that uh, motion failed um, by a vote of three in favor, six opposed, uh, with uh, districts six and ten abstaining. Um, so with that one change of deletion of the 10-year renewal term, we then took a vote on the legal order of the lease as revised, uh, both in terms of deleting the one provision and to correct the typographical errors and omissions. Our vote was 11-0 with district one absent. Thank you. Michael Warner, Chair of our Finance Committee. Uh, Mr. Moderator, the Finance Committee is going to make three motions, um, and I should do that at the end of my remarks. We'll get all the reports first, and then we'll come back and pick up whatever motions the committees are proposing. Okay. Uh, last Monday, we heard a presentation from Joe Siciliano, uh, Parks and Rec, and heard from Joanne Messina, the head of the Greenwich Tree Conservancy. Uh, Mr. Siciliano explained that the Greenwich Garden Education Center was looking to accomplish fundamentally two things. One is to restart the current lease term, which right now is 10 years and a 10-year option. And he wanted to restart that term, which um, uh, to start it with a new 10 and 10 sequence. And uh, further, he said that uh, he wanted, he intends, to, he wanted to be able to sublease the space um, to the Greenwich Tree Conservancy. Uh, while there was overall support for the work of both groups, some finance committee members had suggestions that eventually they became motions uh, as to how the lease might be better reflect, one, the, intention, the intentions of the parties the desire of the RTM members to give the town more options to use the property and to give the RTM more control over approving subleases. Subsequently, there were three motions, and I'll go into those at a later time. Well, I'll give you an overview now, and then I'll formally propose those. One motion was um, to add to the agreement that uh, subleases need the approval of the RTM in addition to the first selectman. Right now, the language stipulates only the first selectman. The Finance Committee motion will add uh, the RTM. That's us. 
second motion was that um, we may sublet, the sublet must be to another nonprofit organization, not anyone. Uh, and the third motion was that, um, is that rather than lock into a 20 year obligation with this current 10 and 10 uh, arrangement, that we just make it a 10 year lease and renewed at that, uh, subsequently at that time period. So I'll make some, emotion, some motions later on that you can vote on. Thank you very much. All right, and Andy Chapin with the report of our Parks and Recreation Committee. All right, Parks and Rec took this issue up. Uh, we noticed that the DEC has been leasing the property for 60 years and been a good tenant. We observed that all the appropriate insurances were in place for the lease and any sublease, um, and that the um, subleases were done by some other organizations in the town. Um, we did not find that troubling. Um, we thought that being limited by permission of the selectmen as well as the codicils of the Montgomery will for the property were probably adequate. Um, the extra 10 years, we really didn't consider that important an issue one way or the other, simply because we have the right to terminate the lease on 90 days for any reason. So we feel the town is taking the appropriate protections in this lease and that they have the control if there's ever a problem to fix it immediately. And we passed it 1100 District 5 absent. All right, thank you. Before I call for these motions, um, let me announce the results of the two votes we have taken. The vote on the consent calendar items, those were items one, two, and three. Those in favor, 168, opposed one, abstaining zero. The consent calendar items have carried. The vote on the combined items, those were items four, five, and nine. Those in favor, 173, opposed four, abstaining one. The combined calendar items have carried. All right, Mr. Wells, would you like to present uh, your motion, uh, your committee's motion, please? I probably don't need to because uh, the Finance Committee, one of their three motions is identical to ours, which okay, is deletion fine. of the same paragraph. All righty. Mr. Warner. Uh, motion number one from the Finance Committee is um, adding the RTM approval to subleases. and. Um, the motion specifically changes the language, quote, any sublease agreement. Right, could you give us the paragraph, please? Uh, uh, section 10, I'm sorry, adding to section 10, line four, new language that says, quote, any sublease agreement must be approved by the Board of Selectmen, and this is addition, and the representative town meeting. That's the addition, uh, end quote. The motion passed 740 with District 4 non represented. All right, that is on page 10 of the lease, paragraph 10, line 4. At the uh, following Board of Selectmen, simply insert and the RTM, the representative town meeting. All right, that being offered on behalf of our Finance Committee, it does not require a second. Discussion on that motion to amend. David Detchen, District 10. Um, I'm sorry, did you, did you want to speak first, Mr. Warner? No, this? no. All right, David Detch. I, I fear that uh, the RTM is once again venturing into the area of micromanagement. Um, this, this will, this is clearly an implementation of the lease after the approval by the RTM. We already know who is likely to be the subtenant going forward. And uh, the idea that we need to approve it with the resultant delay, I think is uh, a, an unnecessary addition to a process that quite frankly has worked uh, in other instances uh, for many years. I don't think this is really a necessary amendment at all. Further discussion on the Finance Committee motion? Yeah. Mr. Pirelli Minetti, District 12. Thank you, members. Um, 
I think that it is important to give the representative town meeting a voice in subleases. You know, we all know that currently their plan is to uh, le sublease the, the, this part of this property to the Tree Conservancy. We're all in favor of that. But that's not what the language says. The language says they can sublease it to anybody. Um, and that, so, so nobody's objecting to the proposed subtenant. What we're saying is that if you want a, 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 the ability to sublease without other limitations, then it should come back to the RTM. Um, you know, I was the co-author of a report um, on town leasing a few years ago, and we felt fairly strongly at that time that one of the problems in many of the town leases that did have subleasing provisions was that the RTM didn't have a say and that there weren't appropriate limitations. So if you don't want to write a lot of limitations into a sublease provision, at the very least, you should give the RTM a voice. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion on the Finance Committee motion to amend. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards. Finance Committee motion to amend item eight by adding RTM approval of sublease and proceed to pull your delegation. While we are voting on that, we will take up the next Finance Committee motion. Mr. Warner. Sorry. Motion number two is, um, this is a, I'll give you the reference in a second. It's a stipulation that subleasing be only for not-for-profit organizations added to section 10, line one. Specifically, the language should read, The corp quote, the corporation may sublet the premises, uh, the, the current language reads, the corporation may sublet the premises, and then added is, quote, to another Greenwich not-for-profit organization, end quote, only with the express permission of the Board of Selectmen, and so on. So the additional language is, to another Greenwich not-for-profit organization. It, the intention here is that it not be to a profit organization. Okay, again, that is offered on behalf of our finance committee, so it does not require a second. Discussion on that motion to amend. Michael Carter, District 6. Why don't you wait till you come up? Just so I understand your wording. All, please direct all comments it's, to the chair. It's unclear to me that the wording you used means that it's exclusive, that it's a not-for-profit, as opposed to to rent to a not-for-profit, to sublet to a not-for-profit, you must get the selectman's permission. That implies that if it's a for-profit, you may need no permission. So I just want to make sure we're writing this properly. Do you have any suggested language? <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, I just play one here. It may, maybe it should say, you know, it should maybe, unfortunately, have to use the word only twice, only to a uh, not-for-profit and only with the permission of the uh, first selectman. Should we assume people will be reasonable? Is Mr. Uh, Wetmore still here? Uh, Mr. Uh, Fox? No. All right. OK. So are you, uh, are you suggesting a change, or are you just noting that there's a possible... Well, I'm just said, suggesting just to make it clear that that's what the intention is, that maybe we could tweak the language. Mr. Warner. I might be oversimplifying this a bit, um, but there's a, two elements to this language change. One is the language says, quote, to another Greenwich. 
That is, it can't be a not-for-profit from Kansas City. It has to be a non, another Greenwich not-for-profit uh, organization only with the express permission of the Board of Selectmen and, depending on how the vote goes, the RTM. Uh, it seems to me that you would have to parse this language pretty severely to get confusion out of it. Um, and they could always look at the legislative history by dialing up the video here. <laughs> Thank you. Further discussion on this uh, second motion to amend? Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards? Second Finance Committee motion to amend item eight regarding sublease to not-for-profit organization and proceed to pull your delegation. All right. Oh, we closed the public hearing, yes, when we voted on the combined items. Thank you. Are we ready for the next motion? District chairs? All right, Mr. Warner. I'll try to make this less obscure. Motion three from the Finance Committee is a represents a desire by some members not to lock the town into a 20-year lease. This is the 20-year lease issue. And um, this is to strike section two, paragraph B in its entirety. Uh, and um, that's, that's the section that has the 20 year lease with, two ten year, with a 10 year option. And it just strikes that entirely. All right, uh, again, does not require a second. This is a motion to delete paragraph 2B, which has to do with renewal terms. Discussion on that motion. Yes, this is a motion. If you turn to page two of the proposed lease agreement, at the very top is paragraph 2B, which provides for an option to renew the lease for an additional term of 10 years. And uh, this is a motion to delete that entire paragraph B. Mr. Meskers. That's not a point of information. That's a point of argument, I think. <laughs> so would you, like to, would you like to make it? I think it's been made. Well, except the viewing public didn't hear it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Meskers suggested that there's a provision for a 90-day cancellation in here. So why are we worried about renewals? Was that your point? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Further discussion on this third motion to amend? Peg Freiburg, District 7. Although technically it is true that if we have the ability to cancel the lease at any time, uh, we need not continue for another 20 years. The fact is that these things tend to have a life of their own and go on to autopilot. And unless something egregious happens, it's unlikely that anybody is going to invoke the emergency out clause. I think that we should analogize this, mentally speaking, to what happens with the town's procurement contracts? When you uh, go out for bid, you pick a contractor to do some ongoing function. You lease, you, you contract with them for a fixed term of years. And at the time that that is finished, you go out for bid again. You don't keep going on and on and on unexamined with the same contractor. 
these properties are unique, valuable properties. There may be many not-for-profit organizations in the town who would like to have the use of these properties. And unless we actively consider other propositions for people who might make better use of it than the incumbent, we will go on forever with the incumbent. So I think that by limiting this to 10 years, they've already had 60 years, another 10 years gives them a reasonable amount of time to make whatever uh, case they want to make at the end of 10 years to get another contract, but it also gives the town time to put a notice in Greenwich time and say, hey, is there somebody else out there who might have an alternative use that they would like to propose for this property? If so, raise your hand and we'll consider you. And not just let things go on autopilot with the incumbent for another half of a century. Thank you. Further discussion on the Finance Committee motion to amend. Rommel Nobe, District 8. So this is a, uh, a tenant of a Greenwich property that couldn't be described any better as being a pillar of the community. Um, as a nonprofit organization, I think that by that offering them, a, one, a long-term lease, and then two, the option to extend for an equal period, allows them the stability to be able to encourage their contributors to continue to support the community. This is a fantastic organization, and I think that uh, denying them the opportunity to have stability in their lease agreement with the town uh, would be a detriment to the community. So I am in support of giving them the 20-year option. David Detchen, District 10. You know, we had this debate a number of years ago, and I thought that we had resolved it, that really we do have commercial leases in this town, uh, and of course those are put out for inquiry and bid and whatnot, but there's another category which is essentially uh, providing property for the benefit of the town through the services of not-for-profit organizations who provide uh, uh, services uh, to the residents of the town. And those are not really viewed on a commercial basis. I mean, quite frankly, the reason why the, the, the rent for this is $1 a year is because the town is benefiting from the serv services that this organization uh, provides. Um, and, and that's the value that we're getting out of it, and they've been providing it to us uh, for decades. Uh, I view the 10-year extension as a complete non-issue, since if we don't like it at the end of 10 years, we terminate it within 90 days. I think one of the philosophical concerns I have generally about where we are in the RTM is I sense uh, within the RTM to some degree an inclination, uh, frankly, not to trust institutions in the town that have been, frankly, loyal citizens for many years, and frankly, uh, an inclination not to trust other parts of town government who obviously have worked with the RTM and are working, frankly, to advance the interests of the town. And it's, it's a development that I find somewhat troubling. Mr. Pirelli Minetti, District 12. Um, I think there's a little bit of confusion about this existing lease. Um, people have said they've had a lease since 1957. It's been for 60 years. That's true. The current lease that they're in was actually executed in 1997, and that lease had a 10 year term and two 10 year renewal options they are now at the end of that first renewal option and could otherwise have one more 10-year renewal option, which would end in 2027. By giving them a new lease, 
with a 10-year term and without a renewal term, we are basically leaving them in exactly the same position they are today if they simply renewed the lease as is without the sublease clause. So basically, the Garden uh, Education Center came to the town and said, we want something that we don't currently have in our lease, which is the right to sublet. That's fine. But in, we should, what we should, and in order to do that, instead of simply amending the lease, they made it a new lease. Now, so when they made it a new lease, they put a renewal term in, because that's what we have been doing. The point here is that by not taking a renewal term on this lease right now, we're actually not putting them in any worse position than they would be if they simply didn't get a sublet clause and renewed their lease. I don't see any benefit that the town gets for giving an extra 10 years right now by doing a new lease in order to accommodate the Garden Education Center. Now, I don't think that there's any likelihood that the Garden Education Center won't get a new 20 or 30 year lease the next time it comes up for renewal if they're still doing a great, the great job they've been doing and it's a vital organization. Point is, we don't know what the case will be in 10 years. We made a decision in 1997 to give them 30 years. And all this does, by limiting the term to 10 years now, is it gives them the benefit of the 30-year lease that they got in 97 and gives them a sublease clause. So I don't think we're really doing anything negative to the Garden Education Center. This is not an entity that raises large amounts of money where you need to be able to assure donors that the money they're giving for capital improvements will be, you know, be lost to them essentially if, if the lease is terminated. That's not going to happen. So I think in this case, this is not in any way negative about the Garden Education Center, but it's really maintaining the status quo plus letting them have the right to sublet as we've amended it. Thank you. All right, will the district chairs please mark your voting cards. Finance Committee motion to delete 10-year renewal provision and proceed to poll your delegation. I do have the results of the vote on the first Finance Committee motion. That was to add RTM approval for subleases. Those in favor, 132. Opposed, 43. Abstaining, 3. That motion to amend is carried. All right, the second Finance Committee motion was to um, add a provision that a, any sub-lease must be to another Greenwich nonprofit. The vote on that motion to amend, those in favor, 140. Opposed, 33. Abstaining, 5. That motion is carried. All right, we have this final motion to amend outstanding on item 8. After we get that vote, we then will have to vote on item 8 as amended. So we will need to await the resolution of this pending motion before we can vote on item 8 on the merits. But is there anyone who would like to discuss item 8 in general?
We're waiting on District 7. Do we have the card for District 7? We're waiting on the District 7 vote. We have the result of the vote on the motion to delete the 10-year renewal provision. Those in favor, 104. Opposed, 69. Abstaining, 2. That motion is carried. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards. Item 8 as amended and proceed to pull your delegation. While we are voting, we will continue. Item 10 now comes before us. John Toner, our selectman. Resolved that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed a member of the Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Agency for a term expiring 331 21 
Alan Rossi. Thank you. Will member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item 10 has been moved and seconded. May we have the reports of the committees that considered this? Beginning with, uh, is this Mr. Berg or Mr. Eddy? Peter Berg, chair of our land use committee. You gonna do it? Yeah. Uh, John Eddy, chair of our appointments committee. Mr. Monterey, we're gonna propose that we change that amendment to alternate member of the uh, Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Agency. All right, so this is a substitute resolution? Exactly. All right. So will a member please, all right, so the substitute resolution on item 10 is the appointment of an alternate member, uh, appointing Alan Rossi to be an alternate member of Inland Wetlands for the same term. For the same term? For the, for the same term, yes. All Thank right. Let, uh, will a member please uh, move the substitute resolution? Okay. Substitute resolution on item 10 has been moved and seconded. John Eddy, chair of our appointments committee. The uh, appointments committee voted 12-0-0 to postpone this appointment until the September RTM meeting. All right. Um, Mr. Berg, you have nothing to add to that, right? 11-0, District 5 absent. To postpone. You, to approve this or to no, postpone it? to postpone. Postpone because it, okay. Mr. Thank Rossi you. was out of town. All right, thank you. All those in favor of postponing the substitute resolution on item 10 to our September meeting, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That motion is carried. Item 11 now comes before us. Mr. Toner, once again. Mr. Moderator, I have an alternate uh, resolution. Okay, substitute resolution. Substitute resolution, uh -huh. thank you. Resolved that the following named person be nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed a member of the Alarms Appeal Board for a term expiring 331-2018, Joseph Havrenek. Okay, so the substitute resolution modifies the term, changing it to 2018. Yes. Thank you. Will a member please move the adoption of the substitute resolution? Substitute resolution on item 11 has been moved and seconded. May we have the reports of the committees that considered this? Mr. Newman, are you going to give us the town services report? Sure. Um, Mr. Havnick will be completing the term of Jim Dane, uh, who is leaving midterm. The item will be corrected as it was. Mr. Havnick and his wife have lived in Greenwich since 1969. He has been a police officer, both paid and volunteer since 1976. He is still active as a volunteer officer. Uh, Mr. Havernick volunteers with area charitable organization, uh, organizations and accepted Chief Heavey's uh, suggestion to join the appeals board. Uh, he has not had an opportunity to sit on the Alarms Appeal Board meeting, um, but he is aware of the responsibilities and he believes his police experience will help in his decision and will not be a conflict. Um, our meeting got a little backwards, so 11 came before 2, and our vote was 6 0 0. District 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 12 absent. Thank you. Mr. Eddy with the Appointments Committee report. The Appointments Committee voted 12 0 0 uh, in favor of Mr. Hevranek's appointment. Thank you. Discussion on item 11. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards? Substitute resolution uh, on item 11 and proceed to pull your delegation. Item 12 now comes before us. Rick Marganot of District 8 with that resolution. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, members of the RTM, and members of Greenwich Conservation Advocates who are in the back. And by the way, this item is here on petition from Greenwich Conservation Advocates and petition of 235 members of uh, the town, and that's how it comes to the call. So what we have here is a proposed ordinance to prohibit the introduction of a waste associated with natural gas and oil extraction into the town of Greenwich. And the, the ordinance in its form has substantially been adopted in 19 other towns well, in Connecticut. Let's not, we're not going to have discussion we on this right now. All I want you to do is introduce it. You can summarize it. Maybe that's all you want okay. to say about it. Okay. So the ordinance itself has some definitions on, on 
on what exactly natural gas extraction activities are, oil extraction activities, and hydraulic fracturing. And it speaks to oil waste and natural gas waste. And what the ordinance does is it prohibits the application of natural gas waste or oil waste from natural gas extraction and oil extraction activities into the town of Greenwich on any road or real property, despite the fact that the DEEP might bless these wastes and give them white what might be called under regulations to come in the next year, a beneficial use determination. It also- Right, so is this the same as appears on the call? Yes. Okay, that's yeah. all we need. Will a member please move the adoption of the resolution? The resolution on item 12 has been moved and seconded. May we have the reports of the committees that considered this? Peter Berg, chair of our land use committee. Doug Wells, Chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee. Um, this uh, um, item um, was uh, addressed uh, by Mr. Marganot as well as Jennifer Siskin, the local coordinator of uh, Food and Water Watch, an unpaid volunteer who has worked with many uh, Connecticut municipalities uh, regarding waste associated with natural gas and oil extraction. Uh, she, um, um, this is in a joint session that we had with land use. Um, I won't go into the uh, detail uh, given the heat in the room uh, tonight, but if you look at the explanatory documents that you all received, it, gi it gives you um, uh, chapter and verse about uh, what it is that um, this organization is trying to accomplish by introducing this <coughs> ordinance uh, to us. Um, after we heard from Ms. Uh, Siskin, we uh, had, uh, we were addressed by uh, Wayne Fox, uh, town attorney, who recommended that uh, we should um, uh, move on this item slowly for a couple of reasons. Number one, the state uh, has a bill uh, before the legislature which uh, may address some of these issues, uh, although Ms. Siskin believes that it won't address all of the uh, different uh, types of um, waste that is associated with uh, uh, fracking and um, is uh, uh, pursuing a, a more restrictive ordinance at the local level here in, in Greenwich. Uh, it was Mr. Fox's uh, recommendation that we get input from the Department of Public Works and the Conservation Commission, uh, two organizations who are uh, interested in this ordinance. Uh, we review the action taken by the state over the summer, if any, and uh, report back to the RTM. Uh, based on uh, Attorney Fox's recommendation, Legislative and Rules Committee uh, uh, made a motion which was uh, approved by a vote of 11-0-0 uh, to refer this item 12 back to the Legislative and Rules Committee and the Land Use Committee uh, to report back to the RTM at our September meeting. Report back when? September 2017. Ooh, you got some work ahead of you. <laughs> Could I see you, Mr. Wells, for a moment? Yeah. Uh, Peter Berg with the Legislative and Rule, I'm sorry, with the Land Use Committee report. Good evening again. So, um, as Mr. Wells mentioned, this uh, we met jointly, that is, Land Use met jointly with the Legislative and Rules Committee. Uh, he, Mr. Wells said that um, a joint committee was formed uh, that, will, that will report back to you in September. Uh, we made the same motion. Our vote on that motion was 11-0-0, District 5 absent. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Wells. Um, the, the motion, which is a joint motion with land use, is to refer this uh, matter back to our committees for the purposes of presenting um, new information and perhaps a, a revised ordinance at, at our September 2017 meeting. All right, thank you. That is a motion on behalf of our committees and does not require a second. Discussion on the motion to refer item 12 to the Legislative and Rules and the Land Use Committees. Mr. Marganot, do you want to address this? As a member of District 8 and as a member of Greenwich Conversa uh, Conservation Advocates, I'm in favor of the referral. We expected the referral to be made, and I would ask you to keep in mind that when you voted for the Plan of Conservation and Development on September 12, 2009, after 23 meetings and great expense, you said your top priority was water conservation, and that's, is, that is what we're looking at here protect our town resources so we don't have another environmental catastrophe creeping up on us. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion? 
All right, we can adopt motions upon unanimous consent. So I will ask if there's any objection. If there is a single objection, we will then take a recorded vote. Is there any objection to this motion to refer? Hearing none, this motion to refer is adopted upon unanimous consent. All right, um, we do still have, I do still need to, uh, do we have any votes outstanding? Yes, just uh, item eight, right? All right, so I, I need to await the tally on item eight before we can proceed to adjourn. We have the vote on the substitute resolution on item 11. This is the appointment of Joseph Havernack to the Alarm Appeals Board. Those in favor, 170. Opposed, zero. Abstaining, one. Item 11 is carried. There being no further business to come before the meeting tonight, and absent objection, the meeting stands adjourned upon unanimous consent. Thank you all for coming. Have a safe trip home.